Conventional electron and optical microscopes have many applications ranging from semiconductor device manufacturing uh, to medical diagnostics. The sheer ability to visualize the structure of materials, devices, or a biological tissue that elude the naked eye has underpinned countless discoveries. There are many different possible ways for light or electron beams to interact with a sample in order to reveal a high resolution map of its topography, density, luminescence, or other spatial heterogeneous attributes. But most common imaging approaches still limit which types of samples can be imaged based on robustness, ability to be labeled, uh, or time scales required to collect an image. To relieve some of these limitations, my research focuses on developing new ways to image dynamic processes and materials that have often been neglected by traditional microscopes. I like to say, we make microscopes that make movies of messy molecular materials. For example, a key process in the first billionth of a second in photosynthesis involves the shuttling of solar energy absorbed by a chlorophyll molecule through a dense network of a series of additional chlorophyll molecules. These chlorophylls are all embedded in membrane proteins uh, inside of a chloroplast, and the energy needs to reach a dedicated location to initiate the biochemistry required to make starch and also make all of the oxygen that we breathe. The absorbed energy travels over tens of nanometers, racing a clock that takes for less than a nanosecond, uh, and we still don't understand how a given configuration of chlorophylls gives rise to the unparalleled efficiency of this energy transport process. But to try and unlock uh, nature's well-kept secret, my lab has devised a new microscopy by transforming a so-called super-resolution fluorescence imaging approach into a way to track how nanoscale areas of a photo-excited material evolve over less than a billionth of a second. This is an important first step to explain a critical but elusive process that fuels our planet. My lab has also developed multiple ways to extend the applicability of electron microscopy to delicate samples that it would typically damage while still preserving its nanoscale resolution. Like a handful of other groups, we also collect the light emitted from our samples inside the electron microscope in order to provide greater chemical specificity. Our unique low damage variation of this hybrid electron optical microscopy has allowed us to watch next generation solar cell materials dynamically restructure under simulated sunlight. Uh, though that material is a soft solid, our approach also allows high resolution glimpses at the conversion between liquid and solid phases. And I hope it will eventually even let us watch how molecules organize at the smallest scales in the lipid membranes of our cells.